Tonight our special guest is Marilyn Wall. Marilyn is a Kiwi medium based in Australia and travels the world on a mission to help people overcome grief and loss. Marilyn is in New Zealand to promote her new book, Knowing, and watching tonight to win a copy. Marilyn Wall, welcome to the Big Shows on. I think you know everything about me because you've got a wonderful book called Knowing. So that means you know everything about everybody being a medium. Wow. I, I don't want you to know all my terrible secrets, uh, Marilyn. But, uh, Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, now, look, uh, Marilyn, let's start right from the beginning for our audience. Who, um, they're baby boomers. A lot of them are over, well, many of them are over the age of 50. But uh, just for the one baby boomer in New Zealand that doesn't know what a medium is, let's start by explaining what a medium is. So for those who don't understand the word medium, um, the true wor work behind the word is the upliftment of the soul. That's good. That's the true work. The, That's the true work, yeah. 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 Um, you know, mediums are able to communicate with people who now live in the other world, mm. people that are passed from the earth world. Um, mediums have the ability to psychically work as well and I guess to just briefly explain the difference, people that are psychic are not necessarily mediums. That's just the long and the short. Mm. Mediums are psychic but not all psychics have the ability to communicate with the other world so the mediumship work is different. Okay. The mediumship work is communicating with those that now reside in another world. And you have a passion for it. You love it. Absolutely, oh, absolutely. You, Even to investigate the other world yeah. um, each day and yeah. try and understand it we're a little bit more. We're going to get more onto that, but we're just going to tell our viewers a few more things. You're a New Zealand girl, but of course you've spent most of your life in Australia. You picked up a wonderful Australian <laughs> accent, and uh, you're visiting New Zealand and you're promoting the book. Yes, so, um, absolutely. You miss New Zealand at all, Mar Marilyn? Um, I haven't um, until recently. Um, travelled, travelled and seen a lot of the world. Yeah, I bet you have. Yeah, yeah. but um, New Zealand's just beautiful. It is, isn't it? Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Mm. I've been. You've been drawn back to your. Yeah, your roots. I have for a little while, but mm. you know, new, there's just something. The spirit of um, of New Zealand, mm. the earth. It's uplifting the soul. That's your whole business, isn't it? I, I, li I like that explanation. That's what a medium does, is uplift the soul. Because so many people's souls... Um, I don't know why so many people go off the rails or run. It's just the... If you compare it to a boat, you know, they say that barnacles grow on, the, on a boat, that the boat starts to slow down with all the growth underneath. Maybe it's the same with humans as we go through life. We pick up so many little messages and things that are slow us down. and Just try, trying to comprehend that, you know, for me, that somebody came up with the word soul and then to try and grasp the soul mm. and, you know, the unfoldment of the soul. So, yeah, I often wonder as well why, you know, so many of us on the earth feed ourselves with negative thoughts just mm. daily. You know, it's like, why don't we, you know, encourage ourselves or, or feed ourselves good thoughts, you know, you know, but we don't. We just seem to beat up on ourselves. I believe that so many of us, are, you know, are sensitive and it's trying to understand that about yourself, whether you walk into a room and, you know, you feel fabulous and you go over to the corner and you start to talk to someone. And you've probably experienced it and all of a sudden you feel really down and you think, gee, just, you know, what happened? Mm -hmm. And I guess because of the work that I do and teach, I'm always trying to understand those things. And, you know, we talk about the work of a medium and mm -hmm. those in the other world and just space. So, you know, I know that we move through space and, you know, just walking into somebody else's space in a room can change the way that you feel. I don't know if a lot of people think about those oh, things. you're dealing with people... <laughs> that have had a loss, they're full of grief, something's gone wrong in their life. I don't know what the percentage of people that would say, look, I want to go and talk to Marilyn because I'm feeling happy. I don't think it happens <laughs> that way, does it? That's not the first person they want to talk to when they're feeling happy. So you're, you're dealing with people that need to resolve something, aren't they? And, and of course, death, the death of a mum and dad or a, a loved one, it's a biggie, isn't it? For Absolutely. Them? And, and they're finding it hard to move past that. 
Absolutely. So, um, but what I want to know is, um, uh, you uh, you can confirm to me today, sitting in these studios, that yes, there is another place that these the loved ones go after they've passed here on the earth. There is another place where they are, and they're sending messages to you. Absolutely. 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 I there's no doubt in my mind. I can sense things, see things, feel things, hear things, and bring through information from those that no longer reside here on the earth in the mm. physical body. And that's just the work of the medium. So yeah. the easiest way for me to describe that and what comes mm. to me when you ask me that is that, you know, it's the bonds of love that are eternal. Mm. You know, love never dies. So if you came to sit with me, your loved ones would come through. So that is the eternal connection and that is the bond that we're able to work with. I yeah. believe love never dies. And does it happen immediately or sometimes you have to sort of wait for this message to come through? What's um, the first inkling that you've, you've contacted somebody? What, what? Um, for me, when you ask me when does it happen, I mean I phone read as well. Mm. So, you know, if I'm hearing the voice of the person on the phone, I mean I'm immediately ready to work and those in the other world know. They know. Wow. You know, they know. It's they they know that, that yeah. this person is coming to see me. You know, they know. Um, it is hard to comprehend the intelligence of the other world. I mean, I wake up on days and wonder how how they know I'm working. I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> I question it as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when you think about space and time and we're able to move through space and time, you know, we're so much more than, than what we all think we are. Mm. Yeah, we are so much more than just the physical form. What's the biggest question that uh, they want resolved? Oh, look, the, the first thing that comes to mind is they, they want to know that they're okay in the other world. Yeah, they want to know that they're okay. Um, you know, many people have lost a loved one and didn't get a chance to say goodbye because I've also... Closure. They're looking well, for they closure. never got to say goodbye, but, you know, I also know that a lot of the times if you're sitting around a hospital bed with a loved one, mm that, you know, they will go to the other world or close their eyes when you get up and leave the room. And, you know, you could have been sitting there for five hours or five days or five weeks nursing them. Mm. Um, so there's lots of different things that people come to us. Mm. Um, maybe they've had an argument with someone, they weren't talking to them and they went out the door and there was an accident and they live with that and they beat themselves up. and. Yeah. Any images of where they are? I mean, you're saying you hear voices. What sort of images pop into the... Uh, is, is the is the image that you see of them in this world or is it an image of them in the world that they are now? Um, when I'm um, doing a session with somebody, um, you know, I might get a sense of a beautiful garden. Um, I might get a sense of rainbows. Is it like that in the other world? I don't really know, to tell mm. the honest truth. But what I do know is that those in the other world are able to impress upon me um, visions and things that I can see, and through that I'm able to interpret. Mm. So, you know, if I was working with you, and, you know, I know there's a lady in the spirit world that you've lost, um, you know, and I'll pass on the information, I could get a sense of a beautiful rose garden and whether you know that was a love of hers when she was on the mm. earth i would know that as well that would be different for me to interpret um, as to knowing where they reside now in that other world and and for me it's just uh, it's in a beautiful place mm. um, it's not always like that i don't always get get that sometimes i don't get anything just a just avoid a voice, yeah. just a void of um, you know somebody sitting with me what might want to know um, just like here on earth you know I try and comprehend how on earth um, behind every house people live a different life and in the other world as well it's like worlds within worlds there are many mansions yes now, um, <laughs> many planes <laughs> <laughs> they just they explained it to me as many planes many planes and yeah. I wonder if that was given to me that way because I grew up in New Zealand and I always remember flying out and seeing the planes over the South Island mm. so it's interesting how information is passed on to each medium differently as well uh, Marilyn I want to say when you do make that hit you've got that connection Wow, 
that and you can see the person that you're talking to they identify immediately because you've you've asked a question that they know the answer to and um, what's that feeling like it must be wonderful i mean that's healing for you too isn't it oh look the healing the healing that happens when you know it's not so much the words um, that come through the information i mean yeah it's important for the people here on the earth because that's the evidence mm. so any information that i can bring through and pass on and and the person who's come to sit with me can authenticate yes okay um, yeah, it's it's just you know it's, it's isn't just it, it yeah. is. It's yeah. hard to find the words, yeah. but when when that person that is sitting with you, it's like their hearts being pierced, and they know beyond any doubt. And I could cry that yeah. that that person that they've come to see us is with them. Yeah. They cry, and there's nothing more beautiful than yeah. that. There's nothing more beautiful than that. You know, you talk about grief and the layers of grief that we go through and the emotions. And yeah, there isn't anything more beautiful. And when that person that. goes away, they've been healed to a certain degree, haven't they? They will never get completely over the loss, but you've done a tremendous job in helping them. You know, whether it helps them, um, you know, if information that we can bring through and pass on to them. Um, in their everyday life, um, you know, if they can go home after a session, let's just say I'm reading for somebody, you know, and I know that the person sitting with me has got a, a picture of, mm. of their loved one and, you know, I might be able to see the frame and describe it and the room that they're in and they talk to it or, you know, they've set up a sacred space in their home. If that sort of information is given to the person who comes present day, I, I sort of think if they can go home and look around and think, oh my God, you know, Dad, you must be, how did that lady know that? Mm. You know, how did that lady know that? Mm. And, you know, if there's that seed, seed that's been planted in their psyche, maybe it can open up their world to, to knowing that there's more to life than what or any of us really know. You know, it might open up their world to reading mm. um, or studying a new subject. So that, that excites me. That excites me. When you know what you know, and um, uh, the very primitive message that uh, organised religion has given us about, you know, down there there's hell and up there there's heaven, and it's so black and white and simplistic, isn't it? And yet you talk about the many layers. Does that make you feel a little bit um, sad about the fact that um, there is such awful information out there about the soul world, isn't there? You know, when they would reduce it to... You're, you're either in hell or you're in heaven. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's such a poor um, legacy. Mindset. That, yeah, the mindset. Yeah. And, you know, we take that mindset to the other world as well. When you ask what is it like in the other world, um, so, you know, that mindset we take with us. So, you know, we reside in different places. It's like the same here on earth. But religion's never really been a big thing for me and, I, and I'm not here to convert people. Mm -hmm. But I think it's great to have an open mind mm. and investigate things. And, you know, since I've publicly worked with the other world, there's many things that, that I've realised that I don't know. Mm. And I'm grateful to do the work that I do because um, I don't think if I worked with the with the spirit world or the other world that I would hunger knowledge about so many other subjects. So I'm grateful for and, that. Well, and you put it all in a, your latest book? This is your latest book? It's my only book, oh. my first book. Called A Medium's Journey. Yes. Yeah, and you've yes. had a good one. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what prompted you to say, look, I'm going to write this all down, or your story? Um, what prompted me was yeah. I left school at 15 yeah. and I probably never thought I'd write a book. Oh, oh. So the, the challenge really was not so much about writing a book, the challenge was about starting something and completing it. Three of our lucky <laughs> viewers can each win a copy. Absolutely. That's great. So what they have to do, Marilyn, is they have to email Jared at thebeatgoeson.co.nz and we're going to give them a... Uh, um, an answer. We're going to ask them a question. They can put it in the uh, subject line, and uh, we do a draw. And three lucky viewers. Here's the three books. I'd be happy to sign them if you like as well. Oh, okay. We'll get you to sign them. All about knowing. So, what's a good question, uh, Marilyn? I'll let you ask the question. Who's the author? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Who is the author? Who is the author of this book? <laughs> Marilyn Wall. With a, now, a little bit of. Spelling, W-H-A-L-L, -L. how did that happen? Um, 
An ex-husband, Jared. An ex-husband. <laughs> <laughs> I took his name. <laughs> and to make it even harder, he put an H in it. <laughs> he, he certainly did. <laughs> he wasn't from uh, Wanganui, was he? No. <laughs> <laughs> Being an Australian, you might know the story about putting the H back into Wanganui. So, uh, no, I yeah, don't. It's no longer W-A-N-G, it's W-H-A-N-G. <laughs> So, um, um, but now, I, now, Marilyn, how long are you in New Zealand? What's uh, you back home soon? Back to back to Aussie? And I'm, of I'm you're back all in the a, world? yeah. I'm back in um, Sydney um, in May mm. to publicly speak at an event. Mm. I do a lot of my work via the Skype because I mm. travel. Yeah. I've got online courses. Um, I teach other mediums. Can can any of our viewers, want, if they want to contact you, can can we give them a, a, a an 021 number or an, uh, a number in Australia, they can give you a call. Is, is that possible? They or? can go through my website, oh, okay. marilynwall.com.au. Okay, dot com. So go to the website, marilynwall.com.au, and there's all the information. There's all the information. Wow. <laughs> and did you, when you left that, you left school as a young 15 year old, 14 year old? You said 15, 15 year, yeah. yes. I was a hairdresser. You, when did you start realizing that this, that it was happening to you and not to other people. When did that start? You know, as a little girl, I used to read the clouds. So after I wrote the book, I actually got to see how, you know, being different and reading the clouds and knowing things and, you know, having friends in the other world has always just been a part just, of my yeah, life. Yeah. And as a hairdresser, I wrote about it. Um, you know what a hairdresser's yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. everyone pulls out their heart, whether it's, you know, you listen. And now I can look back and um, know that through touching the hair, um, even back then, I probably had the ability to in inspire people. So you were doing somebody's hair, and they'd be telling you a story, and you'd hear a voice say something in your head about what they were talking about. I would, and I would, would that, in, those, in those days, I would probably sense more. Sense I would probably more, yeah. sense, and through the sensing, um, you know, we're able to interpret like a dialogue. Yeah. Yeah, not a lot of mediums actually um, hear like you and I are speaking. Yeah. Um, it doesn't happen for all mediums. Mm. Yeah. I actually sense. So, what, when was the see? day? We're running out of time. But oh, I love, when what was a pity. the day? Yeah. We could talk forever. <laughs> yeah, when was the day you said, hey, I think I'm a medium? When did that happen? Back in 2002, 15 years ago. 15 years ago, you finally 15 came 15 years yeah. ago, I finally decided to stop running around chasing things and just dedicate my life to sitting in the quiet and listening, the voice, listening to the voices and the yeah. whispers from the other world. Good on you. Yeah. Yeah, it's because it's a brave decision, isn't it? Well, I think we come here to yeah. serve. You yeah. say it's brave. I, I just think that really ultimately at the end of the day all of us come here to surf whether mm. you you know whether you sweep the streets and you smile at someone that walks past that is such a strong thought right through all the spiritual thing is that you would that um in the end um uh, we're not here to gain something we're here to serve again so again it comes back to the yeah. upliftment of the soul so yeah. if you're out on the street and you're sweeping the streets and someone walks past and you look at them and you know you smile you see their eyes light up you've uplifted and you've a uplifted a soul yeah that's a great way to end i'll go and get my broom <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> thank, thank you, you. thank it's been you. Wonderful yeah, to you it's been wonderful yeah. good talk for everyone